Hey guys, what's up and welcome back. It's time for another Cordyceps Militaris Grow video. I have two new tubs going behind me here that I'm going to zoom in and show you here in a second. I'm growing a new strain. Uh, this is the MMX3 strain from Gary from Fresh from the Farm Fungi. It was a result of his uh, Cordyceps Militaris breeding program he did. It was one of the best strains that came out of that. I ordered the liquid culture syringe from him, expanded that into bulk LC and did the mycelium flood rice cooker tech, just like I did in my last video. I haven't really changed much uh, since I started growing Cordyceps Militaris. I'm still using that exact same recipe. Uh, I've experimented with some other substrate additives, but it just hasn't worked out. Uh, it basically just led to increased contamination rates. So I'm still rocking that same original recipe that I showed in my first video, and that's still the one I recommend. Um, I'm still using 600 mils of uh, liquid culture for the mycelium flood. Pretty early on in growing Cordyceps Militaris, I realized that when I first started out, I was using 300 mils. And uh, I realized that by going with 600, um, I greatly reduced my contamination rates and also sped up colonization, which those two kind of go hand in hand. So in my last video, I used two pint jars 300 mils a piece now i'm just using one quart jar 600 mils not much difference just a little easier and i'm using uh our vented liquid culture lids and one other thing that's kind of come to light now i'm in a cordyceps growers facebook group and everybody's always sharing their experiments and their results and trying to make things better one thing that kind of came to light recently is that when you, ex when you get your initial syringe and you expand it to bulk LC, you should really try and use that liquid culture within like seven to 10 days for best viability and fruiting results. So by switching to the vented lid and uh, using peptone in my liquid culture recipe, uh, that, that really let me nail it in that seven to 10 day window. Uh, by combining the vented lid with that liquid culture recipe that I like to use, you can get like super chunky liquid culture, 600 mils worth, no problem in that seven to 10 day window. And uh, then you can you can use it right away and get get best results in terms of, uh, you know, fruit quality and yield and all that. So really, like I said, not much has changed. I'm still experimenting with different strains. One thing I found is that um, yield and uh, fruit body quality can be really strain dependent. So if you guys try one strain and it doesn't work out for you, uh, don't give up. Just try a different strain um, because some of them, you know, maybe a little older culture. Sometimes you'll try another strain and it'll just it'll just fruit great. So keep playing around with it. Don't give up if your first strain you try, uh, you don't get great yields with it. Just uh, try and pick up another strain from a good reputable source, a good reputable breeder and uh, your luck will turn around. Still going with the uh, tub within a tub method here to kind of control the airflow around our fruiting containers. But here are our two containers. I'm still using the same Sterilite ID latch tubs. I'll zoom in on the dimensions there in case you guys want to match them up. So one rice cooker run will be enough rice to uh, basically fill two of these to about an inch depth of substrate which is usually what I go with anyway from like three quarters to an inch and these are looking really good uh, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up but uh, they are starting to get a little peachy orangish hue to them this is uh, 10 days after inoculation after I did the mycelium flood and I basically had really good like full white up after it was like three to four days after inoculation obviously they're looking nice and clean no signs of any contamination, so I'm really hopeful the strain's looking really strong so far. So I'm just going to keep them under the lights here and let them do their thing. And I'm just going to chronicle the grow all the way through harvest. Hopefully we get some awesome fruit bodies. We are at 28 days after inoculation with our MMX3 cakes, and we're just going to take a peek here. But uh, my suspicions are confirmed. Initially, I thought, you know, I was really excited about this strain. I told you the colonization was looking really strong. And now they are just blowing up. So we'll zoom you in here. You can see all those little cordyceps pins completely covering the top of our cakes. And both of them are looking really good. So 
so far so good 28 days in and uh, typically it's about 60 days from inoculation to harvest so hopefully most of these develop into nice mature normally shaped fruit bodies and if they do we'll get some awesome yields so we're just gonna keep them in the container keep an eye on them and uh, should be smooth sailing from here hopefully check these out so this is uh, cordyceps militaris glamour shot time I got them under the halogen lights and uh, I can pretty much watch my electric meter spin while I'm running these halogen lights but it's totally worth it because look at these mushrooms beautiful 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 cordyceps militaris fruit bodies just covered in parathesia uh, what I have them sitting on is uh, basically I just gently coaxed them out of the tubs and the cakes are actually fairly flexible so you can just kind of get your hands under them coax them away from the tub and I sit them right on these uh, these little plastic grids and what these are is they're basically a eggshell crate ceiling tile for like drop ceilings and they're made to be like a vent or a diffuser for a drop ceiling and you can buy them in like two by four sheets at any big box store and then just cut them up into smaller pieces and they're really handy I find lots of uses for them in the uh, the grow room and the mushroom lab here I use them for shiitake too but basically coax the cakes out sit them on one of those and then you can carry them anywhere so I brought them over to the table here and we're gonna pick them off and we'll get a final yield let you guys know what that is you guys pick these basically just use my fingers and just tear them away there's really no need for um, you know any kind of cutting device they uh, they do just peel away from the substrate fairly easily without much sub attached to the fruit bodies you may get a little grain of rice here or there but uh, they pick pretty clean so it's just kind of a tedious process you know now some people do go for a second flush on these um, I've never tried it myself I probably won't with these cakes you can get a second flush but it seems like they're pretty slow to produce and uh, I have so much going on down here in the basement right now that it's like, I just don't have room. Definitely my best grow so far. I'm guessing it's going to be in terms of yield, but it definitely is in terms of fruit body quality. When it comes to growing Cordyceps militaris, it really all comes down to genetics. And uh, we're fortunate that in recent years, we've had kind of a grassroots movement of uh, people breeding these strains. And uh, they are really good to eat too um they taste taste pretty good they're good in like soups uh but uh obviously they're loaded with uh, medicinal goodies too look at this right here look at this monster all right i got both cakes picked pretty clean and it's time for the big weigh-in here so again our Strainer weighs 10 ounces. And we have two pounds of total weight. So that leaves us with one pound, six ounces of Cordyceps Militaris off of two cakes. That is insane yields. That is by far my best grow. Super excited. Um, really cool so i'm not sure i have the attention span to pick cordyceps militaris but i did my best uh, i kept him mostly intact not much left on the cakes i'm gonna get these guys into my excalibur dehydrator dry them nice and low and slow and that's gonna be it for this video uh, let me know what you guys think and uh check out gary at fresh fungi if you want to grow this awesome strain